Hi everyone, it's Brad at MJB Engineering. If you follow my channel, you see we've been doing some subcontract machining for a company and we've got to use some lovely new bits of kit. Um, these are some Colchester Mascot and Mastiff Laves. So the company repair these, these are roots blowers and they look something like that usually. And inside are two rotors. And this is a twin load. They also come in a tri load variety. And what we have to do to them is, if the bearing fails, the rotors move within that blue housing, the tips of the rotors become worn, so we have to weld them up and machine them back. So you can see, we've prepped this one for welding by spraying on some white ceramic anti-spatter spray. We have cleaned up the area on the very tip of the lobe to be welded, and then we'll carry out the welding with a very specialized nickel wire and what that does is it gives a soft weld deposit that doesn't harm the cast iron base material. And then we can machine that back without it going rock hard. So once we've welded it up, we just rough it off with a grinder just to take off any peaks and um, just make it a bit easier on the lathe. We then chuck it up in the lathe and this is after the first pass. So you can see there's some shiny areas. They're the high spots and all the low spots we're not yet touching. So this is the second or third pass and you can hear it's still not hitting on every low and um, you just got to keep roughing it down until you get contact all the way along the rotor. So this slow-mo shows that now you don't get a chip from every lobe because some lobes are higher than others where there's a little bit more weld or a bit less weld but we put on enough weld that we can machine it back. And now we've cleaned up that rotor and it's doing an equal cut on all three lobes. And this is the finish that you can achieve. This is using a Sandvik CBN insert for cast iron. And it is literally a mirror finish. So once the rotors have been welded up and machined, they often wear the ends on the housing where they drop. So we need to machine the ends of the rotors and the both of the pair will need to be made the same length. So we just face off the rotor. Because we've faced off the rotors and made them shorter, we also need to face off the housing. Otherwise the rotors would be too short for the housing and the uh, unit wouldn't generate any air because it would just leak past the gaps. So we set this up on the uh, bed mill and um, here we are, we're taking about 15 foul depth of cut. We need to take 59 foul off of this housing to be the same length as the rotors which we have faced off. So this is a, another blower unit, this one's slightly longer. Again, tri lobe welded up and machined back. So once this welding's done, the final part of the process is to then gang mill the tips to make that contact area a certain width. Now some rotors are wider than others and this indexable gang mill can be altered to suit the width of tip required. Over the coming weeks, I do hope to get some more video clips of the machining processes involved in repairing these blowers. Next week, there is a retired machinist who used to work for the company coming in. He's going to do some work on this horizontal borer. As you can see here, there is a quite a large housing set up. It's too big for the vertical mill, so it needs to be done on the borer. I hope to sort of get under his wing and learn a bit about the machine and how he sets a job up like this, what sort of tooling and speeds and feeds he uses. Um, as I say, he's retired and he will only be coming back now and, again, now and again. It's difficult to film all aspects of the repair process. As I say, I am working for the company on a subcontract basis and I don't want to take the piss. But here's some more images of components of the blowers so this here is a housing for a twin lobe and here are the rotors for that housing these are quite small only 10 inches long and um, i think these just needed metal spraying on the shafts 
This here is the housing end plates for that setup and the bearing had actually spun in the bore were marked with the little black crosses and we turned a cast iron sleeve. Finally, here's some different work that we've completed this week. These are instrument cluster panels for an early 20th century matchless motorcycle. Um, this job was given to us by our friend Pat. Pat is a matchless enthusiast and knows everything there is to know about matchless motorcycles. So these clusters were made from about 1.2, 1.5 millimeter thick steel. Um, it would be CR4 mild steel, very formable. The former and the patterns actually came from Latvia, from a friend of Pat's. Most of the form was already done. Pat just had to form the ring around the edge um, and we just had to weld them together. While he was round, we also cut some engine mounting plates, um, brackets for, again, a matchless motorcycle. And we made these out of quarter inch steel, uh, some reclaimed plate so that they were era um, appropriate. So all the bikes is in Imperial. So it was nice to make these from quarter inch plate. And uh, I'll leave you now with this clip of the CNC plasma cutter cutting out um, another pair of the brackets. And um, thank you for watching our video and uh, I hope to catch you next time.